Welcome to our Hilltop Estate project. I'm up on a hill. The home has incredible views from every window. We designed the home to have a Napa inspired feel and then blend that with the coastal location. We did this really beautiful textural plaster on the outside. We worked with Hart Howerton, the architect on the project, and they had this beautiful vision and we really came together collaboratively. We did steel windows. The steel windows took nine months to make and get here and they are worth it. They're so beautiful, you'll see more on the inside. The gas lanterns really set the tone for the entire home. I love how they have this curve against some of these clean lines of the architecture. I love when we can bring exterior materials into the interior of a home. So you can see that we started with this limestone on the front porch and we carry that into the entryway. The entryway is honestly one of my favorite spaces in the home because we did oak paneling on all the walls and the ceiling. At first our clients were like, are you sure we're gonna do wood paneling on our entryway? But then when we looked at it, we realized we have these kind of creamy white walls in this main open space that I'll take you to in a minute. And so creating this warm and cozy feeling in the entryway was really important, especially with all of the glass. We decided to do the console table in front of the glass. And I love how that looks. Our door is so tall that we didn't do a chandelier in the center, but instead we did sconces. And so we did four sconces in each of these spaces. We grounded the space with a neutral vintage rug and these velvet ottomans. You've seen these in my house. They're McGee & Co. I love them so much. And then it really ties in this beautiful rust tone that you'll see in the spaces following. In the corner, we did these teak orbs. This is one of my favorite things to do when we already have a table and we kind of have an empty corner. I will add something really sculptural. So whether that's like a concrete sphere or maybe it's a pedestal, but something just interesting and organic and it fills the space without distracting from the main focal point. When working with architects, we always love to think about the end results and our favorite vantage points in a home. And I'm standing in one of the many beautiful views in this home. Behind me, you have this repeated opening. We have the one that leads into the formal living and dining room, and then the one that leads into the kitchen and family room, and then down this beautiful hallway. So now, Come back with me. I am standing in our formal living and dining spaces. We wanted to bridge the two spaces together in some way because it's all open and it's quite symmetrical. So we did uniform drapery on both sides and then we did symmetrical chandeliers. I loved that these had this really subtle curvature that reminded me of something that would be in a Napa home um, that our clients love a lot. We picked a few elements that would be black that tied in with the windows, but for the most part, we let the windows be the black accent and then softened everything else so it wasn't so black and white. We started with this beautiful vintage rug. We have these nice, peaceful, calming colors. And then this wall here, we had a fireplace and we did a limestone. And you'll see that that's, again, a theme that we've done throughout the home is incorporate limestone in different ways. We did a more traditional shape and then we did built-ins on either side that incorporate some curved corners. That just helps soften things. We've paid attention to details with little molding profiles like this little bead detail, this double bead detail on the custom cabinetry and even the wallpaper on the back of the built-ins. Instead of just having the paint on the back, we did a wallpaper that has this flannel, like menswear inspired texture. And I love that that adds warmth and texture and interest, but is still a simple enough backdrop that we can layer in a lot of accessories. I love to incorporate a mix of books, boxes, 
leaned artwork, objects, plants, to have this many spaces to fill, you gotta kind of mix it up with the levels and the shapes. You have heard me talk about mixing furniture styles and it is one of my favorite things to do in design. It's a signature of the Studio McGee look is mixing and matching. And so in here, we mixed the upholstery, one skirted sofa that has this really nice swoop to the arm and has a depth of color. And then we did a contrasting sofa that has a tuft across the seat and a leg detail with some oak. So you'll see that this oak gives us a jumping off point to then tie in the chairs across the room. They aren't a set, they aren't necessarily a perfect match, but they tie in together with like one coordinating element. And in this spindle back, you're getting this nice view when you walk into the room. They have this easy recline that feels relaxed. And then instead of just doing a neutral, because we had a neutral textural fabric on this sofa, we did a neutral stripe on the upholstery so that you're getting some interest, but it still provides a neutral backdrop to layer textiles. I use the word texture all the time. It's really important to me and to design to make something feel more comfortable and not too just like slick. And it goes beyond the pillows that you use. Yes, you can get texture in pillows, but that can translate into the texture of your furniture choices. For example, we have this really cool detail that goes around the edge of the coffee table. We also have a nail head detail on this ottoman. That is a texture. It's not the kind that you think of when you think of a cozy throw, but it is adding something beyond just a smooth ottoman. We have another texture here over on the stone accent table. It's a smooth texture, but it has this kind of like detail of this organic marble and that adds another surface that's not perfect. And that for me is what makes a home feel like home is when you have surfaces that aren't totally perfect. So heading over to the dining room side of the space. The vaulted ceilings carry into the room and we have this gorgeous stain that is a shade darker than the floors. We worked really hard to get the stains to speak to each other but not match exactly. We have really tall ceilings and sometimes when they are so tall I don't want the room to feel cold and so we were thinking about actually bringing the height of the ceilings down in this space. So we have this open space with two rooms that speak to each other and we have two rugs. When I have two rugs in a space I like to think uh, in terms of pattern and texture and so on one side of the room I like to do something really natural seagrass, jute, sisal, anything that adds in a really nice organic hand feel. And in here, we did this bleached braided jute rug and that adds the texture. And on the other side, we have the pattern. When you have a dining space that has two long walls, you really need to think in terms of height. So on one side, the easy answer for a dining room is to incorporate a sideboard. So we did that with the beautiful mirror that reflects the view, but we didn't wanna just do another sideboard on the other side of the room, and so scale was the answer. This huge hutch piece, it's tall, it has a lot of presence, it incorporates some glass, and it gives us an opportunity to style and add interest to the space. The design becomes even better when we think about the negative space on either side. So we incorporated stacked artwork and we extended the wall visually by adding these vignettes. This home has so much beauty and I can't wait to share it with you. Next time we will be showing you the kitchen, the family room, and the kitchen nook.